welcome back to my channel. And if you are visiting this space for the first time, you're also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the pudendal nerve. The pudendal nerve is one of the branches from the sacral plexus. Let's use this image here for illustration. This is where we have the emergence of the pudendal nerve here. And you see these nerves providing the sole innovations for the perineal region. So you have a number of branches emerging from the pudendal nerve. And of course, giving half supply to different structures within the perineal region. So let's go for that to see how the pudendal nerve is formed and also the different branches and also the structures that they innovate. Pudendal nerve, as you've said, is formed from the sacral plexus, and it seems to provide the sole innovation of the perineum. It seems to provide the motor innovation of this area to exhibit muscular action. It is also seen to provide sensory innovation for the perineal region. So you see branches emerging from the pudendal nerve to supply motor and sensory innovations for the perineal region. So the next question now is how is the pudendal nerve formed? Even though we already know it's one of the branches of the sacral plexus, it's good for us to be able to establish the basics behind the formation of the pudendal nerve. And while doing that, it's good for us to drive in into the spinal cord. This is where we have the presentation of the spinal cord up here. And in the spinal cord, we have the collection of rootlets in the ventral region. And this is what is harrowed here in red. And this is referred to as the ventral root. The ventral root, because it is located in the anterior part. Also behind, we also have a collection of rootlets also behind, and this is what is harrowed here in blue, and this is referred to as the dozer root. The dozer root, just as the name implies, because it is located behind. This is on one side of the spinal cord. We also have this kind of configuration on the other side of the spinal cord. The two roots, the ventral and the dozer root, will be coming together at this point here that is harrowed in black, to then form the spinal nerve. And this is where we have the formation of the spinal nerve at this region. The spinal nerve will then further subdivide into two subregions. We have the ventral ramus that is arrowed here in purple. Of course, it is ventral because it is in the anterior part. And behind, we also have another emergence that is referred to as the dozer ramus that is also arrowed here in purple. So this is the kind of configuration that you see on just one side of the spinal cord. This configuration is also seen to be exhibited on the other side. This presentation here is just a one-sided presentation, so it's good for us to understand this. So driving further, the formation of the ventral ramus is a target, so it's good for us to drive in more into this region. So this is where we have the ventral ramus here at this point. The ventral ramus will further subdivide into the ventral division that is highlighted here at the front, and behind we have the dozer division. So you have the ventral and the dozer divisions of the ventral ramus. So it's good for us to trace the establishment of these divisions to where they emerge from. So we then have the formation of the pudendal nerve just from the ventral division. So this is where we have the ventral division here in the anterior part. So we have the ventral divisions of the ventral rami from S2, S3, and S4 sacral spinal nerves. So this is how we have the emergence of the pudendal nerve. And it's good for us to be able to illustrate this. We know that the ventral ramus will further subdivide into anterior and also posterior divisions. So it is the anterior, the ventral divisions of the ventral rami of S2, S3, and S4 that will be coming together to form the pudendal nerve. So also using this image here on this side, this is the configuration of the sacral bone. And we know that in the anterior part of the sacral bone, we have holes created along the right side and also the left side. So these foramina are so created to allow for the passage of the anterior or ventral rami. So if we try to drive back to this illustration here, where we have different emergences from the spinal nerve, we say that from the spinal nerve, we have the ventral ramus and the dozer ramus. So it is the ventral ramus or the anterior ramus that will pass through the anterior sacral foramen. 
And this is how it emerges here at this point. Remember behind, we also have the posterior sacral foramina, which of course are created for the passage of the posterior rami. But in the anterior part, we have the anterior sacral foramina, which of course will allow for the passage of the anterior or the ventral ramus. And it's this structure here that is seen to pack through the anterior sacral foramina. And this is what is harrowed here in purple. And we know that the anterior or the ventral ramus we further subdivide into the ventral and the dosal branches. Specifically, in the formation of the prudendal nerve, we need to target just the ventral division. And this is why this point here that is harrowed in purple is a point of interest. So we have the ventral divisions from the ventral ramine of the sacrospinal nerve from S2, S3, and S4. So this is how we have the establishment here. So we should know that it is the ventral division. It is also the ventral rami. So everything about the formation of the pudendal nerve is all about ventral. So using this image down here, this is where we have the ventral divisions. This is where we have the dosal division. We have specifically from the ventral divisions at this point, of course, of the anterior rami of S2, S3, S4 is where we have the emergence of the pudenda nerve. And this is what is seen to be arrowed here in yellow. So it's good for us to be able to explain in details how the pudenda nerve is formed. So let's drive further to see the cause of the pudenda nerve. After its emergence, how does it run before they finally go and innovate the different structures that they innovate? So after the emergence, the pudenda nerve is seen to descend between the piriformis and also the ischial cosigius. We'll try to use this image by the side here for illustration. This is where we have the pelvics. This is the pelvic bone. And at this point here, this is where we have the lower limb that is highlighted here in blue. We know that the head of the femur is seen to fit into the acetabulum. And the acetabulum, of course, is a region of the pelvic bone. And this is what is seen to be presented here in this image. So let's say this is where we have the piriformis here that is highlighted in yellow. We know that the piriformis is seen to extend from the anterior surface of the sacral bone. You see it parting through the greater sciatic foramen before it finally inserted on the greater truncata of the femur. So this is how we have the cause of the piriformis muscle. And we also have the ischial cosigial that's also referred to as the cosigial muscle in this image here that is highlighted here in blue. And the ischial cosigial muscle is one of the muscles that forms the structural component of the pelvic floor. It is seen at the posterior part of the pelvic floor. So after the emergence of the pudendal nerve, by now we already know how the pudendal nerve emerges from the ventral divisions of the ventral rami of the sacral spinal nerve from S2 to S4. So after it emerges, you see it parting between these two structures, which are the piriformis and also the ischial cosigius. So after parting through it, you see it running through the greater sciatic foramen. So you see the pudenda nerve after parting through these two muscles, you see it now exiting the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen. So the next slide now, we take it up from there. From the greater sciatic foramen, it is through this greater sciatic foramen that the pudenda nerve will leave the pelvic cavity. And it's going to be entering back through the lesser sciatic foramen. If you go through our lecture on the bony pelvics, you see how the greater and the lesser sciatic foramen are created from the greater and the lesser sciatic notches. So it's good for us to be able to understand in details how these structures are created. So after exiting the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen, it will enter back through the lesser sciatic foramen. You see that this nerve will be directed into the pudendal canal. The pudendal canal is also referred to as the Alcox canal. This canal is formed by the fascia of the obliterator internus. So if you try to use this image down here, this is where we have the pudendal nerve here, arrowed in yellow. You see it parting through the pudendal canal. And this is what is highlighted here in dotted red. So within the pudendal canal, this pudendal nerve is not seen to pass alone. It is seen to be accompanied by the internal pudendal artery and also the internal pudendal vein. We know that the internal pudendal artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery. So you see the internal pudendal vein and also the internal pudendal artery. So you see these two structures also parting along the pudendal nerve within the pudendal canal. So using this image up here, this is where we have the schiana fossa. The schiana fossa is seen on the lateral side 
of the Anna Canal. This is where we have the Anna Canal. You see the Iskiana Fosa on both sides here at this region. And the lateral part of the Iskiana Fosa is where we have the placement of the Pudenda Canal that is highlighted here in dotted red. So you have the Pudenda Canal formed by the fascia of the obliterator internals, but it is positioned along the lateral side of this canal fossa. And this is what is projected here in this image. And it is through this canal that the pudenda nerve will pass through along also with the internal pudenda vessels. And this is what is seen to be harried here in yellow. So let's now see what happens within the pudenda canal or the alcox canal. So within the pudenda canal, it gives off one of its branches and this is the inferior rectal nerve. If you look at this image down here, this is where we have the pudenda nerve here harried in red, of course, passing through the pudenda canal. So within the pudenda canal, we have the emergence of the inferior rectal nerve, and this is what is harried here in red. Then it continues in its path, where it then further gives off an additional branch, and this is the perineal nerve, and this is what is also seen to be harried here in red. After exiting the pudenda canal, it finally becomes terminated as the dosal nerve of the penis in or the dosal nerve of the clitoris in female. So this is what is also seen to be harried in gray. You can see that the pudenda nerve, as it runs through, it's trying to give off a number of branches. And these branches, as it goes, is supplying the specific regions along that path. So using this image up here, this is where we have the Skiana fossa. Remember we said that the Skiana fossa on the lateral part is where we have the position of the Pudenda Canal. So at this point, we have the Pudenda Canal or the Alcox Canal that is highlighted here in dotted red. Along the course within the Pudenda Canal, you see it giving off the inferior rectal nerve. This is what is seen to be already at this point. Remember, this is where we have the Anna Canal. And we know that deep to the Anna Canal would definitely be having in the rectum. So around this region is where it gives off the inferior rectal nerve. Of course, supplying structures around the space. Then it goes further where it then gives off the perineal nerve. And this is what is also seen to be harried here at this point. After the emergence of the perineal nerve, the pudenda nerve will further be terminated here at this point. That is also harried at this point as the dosal nerve of the penis or the dosal nerve of the clitoris, depending on the sex. So this is how the pudenda nerve goes from one region to the other and also giving off branches along that path. So let's try and drive in into each of these branches that we have listed and see the specific regions that they innervate. So going to the inferior rectal nerve, this is where we have the pudenda nerve here, harried in red. It is directed into the pudenda canal. Within the pudenda canal is where it gives off the inferior rectal nerve. And this is what is seen to be arrowed here in red. This inferior rectal nerve gives off motor innervations and it also gives off sensory innervations. So let's see the motor innervations that it supplies. The motor innervations that the inferior rectal nerve gives is to the external urethra or the external announcement has to exact voluntary motor action and the sensory innovations that it gives is to the skin around the anus and also the lower one third of the anacana so it seems to give sensory innovation and also motor innovations then the second emergence is the perineal nerve after giving up the inferior rectal nerve, it runs further to give the perineal nerve. And this is where we have the emergence of the perineal nerve here, harried in red. The perineal nerve will further subdivide into the deep perineal nerve and also the superficial perineal nerve. This is where we have the deep perineal nerve here, harried in black. And of course, the superficial perineal nerve is also seen to be harried here, also in black. So you see the perineal nerve giving off deep branches and also superficial branches. So let's see what these branches also innovate. For the deep branch, of the perineal nerve, it supplies motor innervations to the levator ani muscle. Remember, the levator ani muscle is what forms the major structural component of the pelvic floor. If you've not checked out my lecture on the pelvic floor, please kindly go and do so. It is branches specifically from the deep branch of the perineal nerve that supplies motor innervations to the levator ani muscle. Where we have the superficial perineal nerve giving sensory innervations to the perineum. So you see the skin around the perineum being supplied by the superficial perineal branches. Then finally, the superficial perineal nerve 
is seen to terminate as the posterior scrotal nerve or the posterior labia nerve. This gives sensory innervations to the posterior region of the skin of the scrotum in male and also the labia prominence in female. So you see how these nerves, how they emerge from being deeply positioned and also superficially positioned. The branches that are deep are the muscular branches and this tends to give motor innervations. While the superficial branches are seen at the peripheral and these are seen to give sensory innervations. So if you try to establish it in that way, it will be easy for us to remember and also understand. Then finally, the pudendal nerve will terminate as the dosal nerve of the penis or the dosal nerve of the clitoris. And of course, this is what is seen here to be heralded here in red. You see that after giving up the inferior rectal nerve and also the perineal nerve, it finally goes and be terminated as the dosal nerve of the penis or the clitoris, depending on the sex. And this supplies sensory innervations to the skin of the penis and also the glass penis. And also the clitoris also is being innervated by the dosal nerve of the clitoris. These are terminal divisions or extensions of the pudendal nerve. This is also seen to give the branches to supply the erectile tissue in male. So if you look at this image up here, this is where we have the dosal nerve of the penis, I like it in yellow, and you see this dosal nerve giving sensory supply to the skin and also supplying the erectile tissue, I like it here in black. So let's go to clinical anatomy, pudendal nerve damage. Pudendal nerve damage that we would look at is the pudendal neuragia. This is a compression or stretching of the pudendal nerve within the pudendal canal. And this is seen to cause discomfort, pain, and also numbness. We also have the pudendal nerve block, which is a local form of anesthesia. This anesthetic agent is injected into this nerve to render it inactive so that surgical process or procedure can occur. So thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.